So today we're going to look at the independence of the judiciary <clears throat> and our objective, the judiciary actually, sorry, not independence of the judiciary, but the judiciary. Our objective cuts across the following points here. You could see them, the meaning of the judiciary, how they are selected. We're going to jump around it. We may not treat it in fully, but I will give you an idea of what it means to select the judges in the Federation, how it works in Nigeria. We're going to see the functions of the judiciary and then discuss independence of the judiciary and why it's very important. Now, whenever we are tabling into a subject like independence of the judiciary, why didn't you talk about independence of the executive? Why didn't you talk about the independence of the legislature? Maybe because both, especially in Nigeria, are elected by the people. So to an extent, the people can determine how far they may last in the office. Or we may say that the power belongs to the people. But the judiciary is a bit different. different. <clears throat> in my opinion, I believe that the executive, to an extent, they have a control by the judiciary. If I look at what's happening in Nigeria right now, even though we are advocating for its independence, but let's go into the topic and let's see what we're dealing with today. So the idea of the independence of the judiciary, first of all, we have to know that the judiciary is the organ of government responsible for interpretation and application of the laws when they are violated. So the final details of the law, if you want to properly understand what the law is trying to say when a statement is made, you take it to the judiciary. As such, they settle disputes, either between the citizens or between the governments and the citizens, right? Or even between the executive and the legislature, right? Uh, they, they act as the watchdog of the law. And most often, we regard them as the last hope of the common man. That means when it gets to the worst, and the, we, as the, normal, as the ordinary citizens, want to plead our case to the government, the judiciary most often is our best bet. So in Nigeria, the judiciary is made up of different courts, like the uh, and uh, the, the apex court is the Supreme Court, that's headed by the Chief Justice of the Federation. I think this is the chap that is appointed by the president. Reason why I believe the judiciary is not independent, in my opinion. Ideally, we pray or we believe that that they are independent, right? <clears throat> Next is the I have the appeal courts, the high courts, the magistrate courts. You will see the high courts in all the states of the federation, Lagos State High Court, this high court, the Keja, all you will see them as well. They should be, I think, the highest courts in the states, right? Now let's look at some functions of the judiciary. What do they do? Interpretation of the law. First, when you want to understand what the law is actually trying to say. For example, when the last election was concluded and they're talking about what does the 25 uh, uh, percent and in FCT, I don't know whether I'm getting the exact thing. Most people fell back to judicial, to the interpretations made by the courts once upon a time. So the final details of the law is at the disposal of the courts. So also the set of disputes right between individual and government between the government and government as well so they punish those that break the law very simple and they safeguard our fundamental human rights that's why we call them the last hope of the common man that's where we go to when we feel that our rights are being trampled upon they also protect the constitution very important they also advise the president when the president wants to embark on some policies and he needs to sort out what the law is actually saying in view of this policy. The judiciary is his or her best bet. So they can make some uh, laws as well. So they give useful suggestions on constitutional preparation, amendments, even signing of bills. So they participate in the lawmaking function. That's what we are trying to say participate in some lawmaking functions and they determine the el election petitions like we're having right now in Nigeria. Uh, the, the president elect the presidential election is still in the courts, even though Tinubu has been sworn in, but the case is still in the court at the moment. So they are trying to determine who actually won the election so that the justice can be given or dispensed accordingly. 
So let's go next to the independence of the judiciary. Like I said, why didn't you discuss independence of the executive or the independence of the legislature? Why are we talking about the independence of the judiciary? We'll see. It means that the judiciary is set free from the, from the interference and control of the other organs of government. Who are these organs of government? You know them already. The executive and the legislative. So they, that the judiciary is free from their control or their influence. So it means that the judges have the capacity to make laws without fear nor favor. They, are, they have the capacity to interpre interpret the laws and uh, discharge their duties without undue influence. So most importantly, they need to be free in order to uh, protect our fundamental human rights. Very crucial. Now, how do we maintain the independence of the judiciary? See, point one says uh, we should ensure that the uh, that judges and magistrates should not be appointed by the executive or legislature. However, the Judicial Service Commission should be in charge of that. In Nigeria, the Judicial Service Commission actually nominates a person while the president approves, right, or ends up confirming their nomination. Do you get? So that's what I'm trying to say, that I am not sure the judiciary are properly are independent, so to say. But look at the points here. Just note it. Now, for them to maintain their independence, there must be proper separation of power. Judiciary must be free from the executive and legislature. Right? The promotion and dismissal of judges should be done by an independent body. Right, likely, the Judicial Service Commission. It should not be left at the hands of the executive because it will influence the activity of whoever is the Attorney General or the Chief Justice of the Federation. Also, they should be funded from an independent source, right? It should not, it should be sufficient and should uh, not be funded by the executive directly. Maybe they will set up an independent body and such bodies pays the uh, Attorney General of the Federation, right? And they should be paid properly so that they won't be influenced by bribes and whatsoever. There should also be security of their tenure in office. That means uh, on no account should we have the judges being sacked at will. That means when the executive interferes in the uh, functions or in the works of the judiciary. Because when these things happen, if a judge is being appointed, he would have at the back of his mind that if he doesn't dance to the tune, the executive organ of government can find something and throw them out. So there should be security of tenure. There should be immunity as well. They should be immune from being prosecuted or dragged before the court of law when they are in office so that they can discharge their duties efficiently. These are the points we are trying to make here. And they should never be partisan. They should never take sides with political parties. They should be neutral. Right? Now, why should they be independent? So that they can discharge their favors according their functions accordingly, without fear nor favor, discharge their duties accordingly. Right? So that they can interpret the law in a non-biased uh, perspective, interpret the law properly without feeling that they may offend either the executive or the legislature or whatsoever. They should be independent because it will help check the abuse of other government institutions. And they should be independent so that they will not be controlled by the executive or legislature. And they should be independent because it will ensure that our rights Fundamental human rights are properly protected. Even the constitution, the, if they are independent, the constitution is also guaranteed thorough protection. Right? And when it comes to interpretation of election issues, they can do that without fear or favor. They can only do these things if they are independent. Now, what are the problems? What are these challenges we're talking about? We are saying that they should be independent. Why? Is there a point where the judiciary is not independent and what could cause it? Number one is political interference from other organs of government. Number one is when they are subjected to political appointments, right? Like when the executive, like we have it now, even though we think they're independent, ideally, in real sense of the situation, I don't think they're independent. And uh, 
Another issue is bribery and corruption. They can be bribed, especially if they are not paid enough. Now, when the government is a dictatorial one, it doesn't listen to them. This is one of the problems the judiciary is going to face. And when they have poor conditions of service, they may be they, instead of working properly, they may be finding ways to make ends meet financially or better their lot instead of doing their jobs. So they will be susceptible or susceptible to bribes. Right? And when they lack the right personnel or the exact personnel to help them discharge their duties, these are some of the things we're talking about. So take a look at them very closely. Right? If you have any question, feel free to ask. If you have any contribution, I'll be expecting that in the comment section. But this topic is a very, very dense one. And I think everybody should try as much as possible to understand this because the survival of our nation depends on this, on the judiciary. Like I said, they are the last hope of the common man.